Well, this afternoon, there is anger among supporters of the NPP in the Kwabre constituency of the Ashanti region following an order by the party's general secretary to, uh, to the constituency executive there to track and suspend all party supporters who staged protest against disqualification of a candidate in its upcoming primaries. Today, the supporters staged a protest, invoked curses, and locked up the party offices there to demand the reinstatement of Osei Poku, the sole contender against the incumbent Francisca Oteng Mensa. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin has more of that report. The reason for our displeasure today is all about the pending promise that the party is organizing in order to mobilize forces for the 2020 election. Fabrice has been an outstanding constituency when it comes to election and when it comes to electing MPP into power. Our last election vote was phenomenal and we don't want our leaders I mean our leaders, being it constituency leaders, regional leaders, or national leaders, to do anything that will transpire the peaceful atmosphere we have in Kwabri MPP. All what we are asking for is delegates knows what is good for the people of Kwabri. Yes. They should allow for a contest yes. Yes. for the yes. delegates yes. to choose yes. Yes. their preferred candidate for the constituency. Yes. Yes. So that we all can mobilize a peaceful force and rally behind whoever the delegates will present to us yes. for the 2020 election. Yes. Our victory 2024, yes. which is going to be a history within the 1992 Republic Constitution, yes. will depend on the outcome of the 2020 election. Yes. And as a party, as a member of the party, who love the party and the president that much, doesn't want our leaders to do anything which will either anger or whatever to bring divided fronts in order not to amass the necessary vote that we want. So please, please and please again, our leaders, we are here for peace. We are here for harmony. We are here for justice. Yes. And we are here for equity. Justice should prevail. Let there be election in Kwabre. Actually, we are, we are just a few of our large number. We are mounting over 10,000 people. They sent us here to do this. From here, we will go and give them the reports. And should the party fail, I know the leadership of this group, Kwabre Youth Movement, Concerned Youth of Kwabre, Concerned Delegate of Kwabre, and Kwabre Development Movement will sit down and decide on the next move forward.
All right, so those were some of the protesters. Their actions seem to have uh, caught the attention of the General Secretary of the Governing NPP. Well, he decided to do what some people may describe as calling a spade a spade. The conduct of some members claiming to be invoking cases on the party leadership, and in particular on members of the National Executive Committee, on allegations that their preferred candidate have been disqualified by NEC from contesting in the primaries. We are completely appalled by such gross misconduct. Accordingly, the party is instructing the respective constituencies or constituency executives in the constituencies where these unfortunate incidents happen, happen to immediately suspend all those involved in this awkward behavior whilst instituting appropriate disciplinary actions against them in line with Article 3 and 4 of the party's constitution. And this one, we are going to enforce to the latter because party leadership go into a meeting, national executive, national council, that is made up of almost everybody that matter in this party. Through a lot of deliberations, we take decisions. We've not even announced the decisions. Then people who think that they are more MP people than all of us, will resort to such behavior. That is almost a link to our politics. And this is something that the new patriotic party is not going to countenance at all, at all. These are candidates that are active, loyal members of our party. Before we even come to the list, there are a lot of them that have come to us for discussions. There are a lot of them that they think that they are not being cleared or recommended by the National Executive Committee or the National Council because of one allegation or the other. There are a lot of them that they themselves have agreed to graciously withdraw from the primaries. Then you, as an ordinary supporter, not knowing what discussion may have gone on, would rather be raining curses on, on, on innocent people. I think that this is something that we are not going to countenance. We will make sure that uh, rules and regulations, particularly our despite measures, are in, in, instituted to instill discipline in our party. It cannot be said that a noble party with rich tradition, like the New Patriotic Party, will get some members of our party exhibiting such crass and crude behavior uh, against their own party. And crude behavior. Later on on the show, we'll be having a conversation. We'll talk to a uh, political uh, analyst. We'll talk to a political communication analyst to find out what he makes of these words and the description of these supporters as such. We also want to speak to the supporters who say they won't have any of this. We'll be talking to their leader who will join us via Zoom. We we'll also want to talk to the incumbent and Mr. Osepoku himself here on the Pulse when I return from this break. back to the show. I'd love to hear from you. If you live in Kwabre East, let me know what you think, uh, uh, where these issues are coming from. If you are passionate, of course, about your party, the NPP, or if you were even part of those who reigned curses on the party, let me hear from you. Join us with your comment on 0540109009. Like I said, we're hoping to be joined shortly by the incumbent, both the incumbent and the disqualified candidate, uh, Osei Loya Osei and Francisca Otey Mensa, the Honorable Member of Parliament for the area at the moment. Right now, let's speak to Bismarck. Bismarck Japan, I believe, is a leader of the uh, movement, the Quabre Youth Movement. Bismarck, thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Sir. So you are the leader of the Quabre Youth Movement, is that correct? 
Yes, please. Very well. So you, uh, I believe the person I'm seeing in the movie, in the video at the moment, pouring the libation and raining cases at the party's office. Yes, please. Okay. Now, this afternoon, we've heard from the party's general secretary. He's actually asking the constituency executives to f look for people like you who rain cases on the party to discipline you. Part of that discipline is suspension. What do you make of that? Yeah, I, mean, I also listened to the by rather unfortunate. Now, what has caused all these things? That's what one should ask. And is it only about Kwabri? The second question one should ask. And if it is not only about Kwabri, then why now? We are now seen to be a rebel group within our noble home. But that's not the case. Because what we believe in the principle of the rule of law and the people majority representative. I think MPP as a party is now swerving away from this principle, which has caused many youth of my life to descend heavily on party leadership. Now, as a one person or as a group, we cannot battle the bigger party. And I believe the bigger party will also call us to hear our side of the story before any other measures will be taken to punish us. So as we are, we are ready, waiting for the party leadership. When they call us, we will go to them and listen to what they have. What it means is that the constituency executives have not reached out to you, Bismarck. No, we've heard nothing from the uh, constituency executives since Saturday. Okay. The party... The, 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 the party has structures within which things work. If you have concerns, did you exhaust those concerns within the party structures before you went to the party's uh, office to pour libation? It's unfortunate. We did all what we could, but our immediate party leaders were not ready to listen to us. If you say most you did all that letters, you could, what exactly did you do? Most of our letters, most of our petitions were not even replied. Okay. All right. So you sent letters and petitions to the party leadership and you did not get any response to that? Yes, please. Have you spoken to the candidate you're supporting, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Osaipuku himself? Let me make this correction. Among the two candidates who were able to file their nomination for in Kwabuki, are all party people. Public youth movement do not support a particular candidate, but we support the rule of law and the principle of allowing party people within the constituency to choose their respective leader. It's rather unfortunate we had only two people. There are other constituencies who have more than two people or two candidates. And in our case, everybody can conclude that, yes, whilst we are against the unopposed agenda, then definitely we are in support of lawyer Antonio Sipo. But we, Kwabri Youth Movement, we say Kwabri now, we Kwabri Development Movement, is, and I say it again, is not in support of any single individual. We wanted a serene atmosphere within our constituency for the 2020 election. Okay. You have a, an incumbent member of parliament who has been able to secure the seat for Kwabre, uh, uh, for Kwabre uh, uh, East. And that person is, in fact, she was hailed at the time she was elected in 2016 as one of the youngest uh, uh, people to get into parliament in the person of Francisca Otem Mensa. Is the work she has done not good enough for you so that when the party says, let's allow people to go on a post, you oppose that decision? I thank you for this very, very question. But it is not up to me to decide on this. I, I heard you in your introduction calling on the people of Padre.
to send their comments on the decision of the party so far. And I know at the end of your program, you will hear comments which will in other ways put a judgmental decision on the performance of our MP. As I said earlier on, we don't hate or like any individual, but we wanted a smooth atmosphere going forward 2020 election. What did you the say? The performance if of our MP... Okay, go ahead. The performance of our MP will be judged in a respective manner. Somebody will see it differently from how I will see it. To me, I will say the MP has done well, but she could have done more than she has done. She could have done more than she has done. Mm. But on average, I will give my MP 52%. Someone also, someone also shared a different view from mine, where the person may give her higher or lower than the mark I have given her. So it is a respective thing. And I pray the people of Quadre will bring their comments for people watching your program to also know the direct or the real performance of my MP. I see. Honorable it it sounds to me like you don't, you don't want to maintain your MP because if you did, a smooth and serene atmosphere for election 2020 would have been the one that the party is proposing, which is to allow people to go on a post because then it's agreed that you like the work that she, she has done. You don't seem to... I you like my MP very, very much, and she knows I like her very, very much. The issue is the agenda of disqualification has triggered so many, many, many impasses in my constituents. I would be very grateful if you can send your reporters to go down to the constituency and ask the people how this agenda of disqualification has affected the atmospheric condition in my constituency. People have even been accusing party leadership either wrongly or correctly. Actually, I don't have any evidence to their accusation. Mm. But a whole lot of people have been accusing party leadership. And this sent a strong signal that going forward to 2020 election, the unity we had in 2016 for that huge sum of votes will not be. Are you saying that, that because of what is happening in the party right now, you foresee that the party will lose votes in the area? Yeah. The I party see. will lose votes. But we all pray and we all join hands to work harder. All right. So that if not anything, if we cannot increase, we will maintain our 771,000 votes that we had in 2016. Very well. I'll, I'll say a very big thanks to you. Well, as you have indicated, the party executives have not reached out to you yet. You're waiting to hear from them. And um, you are not happy about the call for suspension. You believe that the rule of law will apply? Sure. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I've been speaking to... I've been speaking to Bismarck Japan. Bismarck Japan is the leader of a group calling itself the Quabre Youth Movement. They say they are against uh, imposition of candidates, if you like. Um, I have the incumbent member of parliament for the area, Francisca Oting Mensa. Um, Madam Oting Mensa, thank you for your time this afternoon and, 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 here, and being here on the show. Hello, Francisca. Hello. Right. So, um, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. What do you make of all that's happening in your constituency? And thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, let me extend a greeting to everyone listening, most especially to Fabri Indigen. Um, it, it's rather unfortunate that um, this is happening in a very peaceful constituency, um, which is Fabri Indigen. Obviously, in a democratic country as we are in, you wouldn't get everybody um, towing the same line as you think. You definitely have people who will oppose you. Some um, will be genuine, others may not. And so it, I, I would say it is part of um, our system, and it's, it's good that it's in. Other than that, I think we should rather look at... Um, 
the manner in which it the whole thing you know came about. That is where as when you say the manner to which the whole thing came about, exactly what, what, what do you mean, ma'am? Uh, well, I believe, um, like you spoke to Mr. Japon, who obviously is he's not a member of the constituency, if I should put it that way. Um, he has his views, and he has other young people who equally share the same view as he, he does. It's unfortunate that as friends and energetic as they are, the party has practiced. Uh, and several means in which if you have some issues, how you can address it. But for them to have used this particular uh, means to address their views, I believe it is rather unfortunate. That's the party, the party is yes. calling on the uh, on the um, a, a constituency constituency executives to look out for these people who have rain cases on the party mm -hmm. to punish them to to apply disciplinary uh, um, measures. The, the, the general secretary described their behavior as crude and cross. Do you feel that those are appropriate words to use and that's a way to get people on board in these times for well, you? Well, I, 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 believe, I believe the party has rules. The party has rules. The rules that has brought all of us this far. I definitely benefited from the same rules of the party that some people do not believe in now. And I believe he, as the Japan, also has also benefited from this same party and um, rules that he, I mean, now is doubting whether indeed there are rules. Um, I believe there could have been proper means in, in uh, how do you call it, coming out with their, with their grievances rather than going, doing it in this angle. <laughs> I mean, mm. if you look at what they did, including closing the party office, I mean, must you do that? The so if you if you want to express your view, must you you have to lock a party office and invoke cases before you can express your view? There are other means of doing that. I mean, you could equally engage the media. There are others who are doing press conferences and all that, doing all this. But it doesn't mean that what you are saying cannot be heard. It can be heard, but then it would have made their issue more more genuine if they hadn't even gone to this extent. It would have made people even pay more attention to what they want to say. Rather than doing all the coming out with all the surrounding dramas, then you saw the whole thing that you intend to do. So I believe um, the general secretary meant that the rules of the of the party should be applied. And I believe uh, in anything there should be discipline. If there is no discipline I, there will be so much chaos. In, in, hmm. in this world. Ms. Jesse, sorry, Ms. Otten Mensa, why should people believe that there isn't a grand plan to give you undue advantage over other people who want to contest? This is a question that's on the minds of people like uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bismarck, a Japan that I spoke to. Yes, um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for this question. Um, like, when I was speaking earlier on, I said that Obviously, in a democratic country like we are, you can't find all of us believing in one thing. That is why we have several parties to spend, where somebody would want to be NCP, somebody would want to be NDP, and someone who would even want to go further and be um, uh, PPP or CPP, or even go further to other, other political parties. We can't all share the same view. People who have different varied views which make genuine to them. And so I believe um, to some people, they thought maybe um, there should have been a contest. But then looking at the contest, I am not sure um, I would want uh, to disrupt the habit of the whole system. Especially looking at the fact that we, I got one person who came up to contest. But then the party also has also put up some few process that every aspirant has to go through. So I believe the question is, what was it that actually um, wasn't right that made this person be disqualified or was not allowed to contest? I think that question will be left for Nick to answer because I wasn't part of Nick and I wasn't part of his version uh, as well. So I can't give my details as to what actually called for that. But definitely there should be a reason. And I think that is what um, uh, some, of, some of our young people should be asking as to what is actually calling for this. And I believe if we are able to get a reasoning, it will help us to understand as to what actually happened.
that made him disqualified. Do you believe that the party failed? It failed the people by not being able to communicate what happened, like you're saying, because then if it no. had, perhaps this well, wouldn't have happened. I, I think, I think, I think um, this particular question, will, the best people to answer will be maybe um, those after and that feel they were. You are the you are the member of because parliament. You, you are the member I of parliament. Know whether he has been communicated to or not. I mean, not everybody. No, you, you are talking about the youth. The you are talking about the youth in the area who have gone on a rampage. And I'm saying that. Do you feel that the party, especially within the constituency, failed to communicate this to the young people, which is why they are up in arms? That's the question. Well, I, I believe the party, the, the constituency executive, are not part of NEC. and so they wouldn't be able to come out with the information unless they have been briefed. Okay. Um, as to what happened, because um, this is solely for NEC. Right. And um, NEC, uh, the, this particular aspirant also appealed the decision of the regional executive um, vetting committee. Okay. So when he appealed it at the national level, and so now they, um, NEC will be in the best position to let us know what actually transpired. And so I'm not sure those are the constituency level who will be able to give and uh, reasoning as to what happened. And the same thing also applies to me. I can't give reasoning as to why it happened to him. Okay. Especially when I believe we are still going through the process. And there are some constituencies and so they are still doing uh, their election has been put on hold. And I believe from now up to maybe the time we have the election, definitely if there has to be a communication to any candidate or any aspirant who was qualified, the communication will follow. So okay. The list was only released today, and we don't also know the other process that uh, that's Very well. Please hang on for me. Um, let me bring in uh, um, Mr. Anthony Osaipoku, who is joining us via Zoom. Mr. Osaipoku, thank you for your time this afternoon. Hey, welcome, my dear. <laughs> All right. So uh, the the party, the general secretary of the party, said some of the people who were con con contending have agreed to graciously step down. Are you one of those who have agreed to graciously step down to allow the incumbent to go? Oh, I don't think I will be one of them. The reason being that at the betting stage, they asked me to step down. But see, I wasn't comfortable with that. Uh, the one I'm contesting with is a lady less than 30 years. So if you are saying that you are giving dispensation to all women MPs, including that of our British, that means that Mesa for Poco. 40 or 50 years, she could be there. And there's no way it's going to take time for the party. We'll be cut off. So you mean that she has age on her side? Is that the point you're making? Uh, no. Oh, hey, that's one point. The, the reason, and the, uh, one other point is, I would say, constituency we reward hardworking people who have uh, for the party. And probably it has a home for 20 years, 25 years. So if you are saying to do that, you should go on a course. Then, God knows when, an avenue will be open to them. With me, uh, uh, I cannot say I'm going to remain in politics for that long. But what about those who have supported the party all this while? I will say, let me make this point. At the time she was contesting, with all the, for, uh, the requirements of the party, with the greatest respect, she never qualified for what? She has never voted at the area. She has never contributed to the party's cause. She has never participated in social, political, and whatever events, but she found herself in. So if, for, the, for whatever means, he was able to get the seats, why do you now cut off some of us who contested her and she won? It's absurd. That's the point that I want to say. But if you say that the person, and, never, and, she never uh, participated in party, uh, in party functions over there, she won. The people voted for her. They wanted her to be, in, to be representing yes, them. Yes. Yes, they did. So if he has come in, he has won against four able men. Why change the rules now? Uh, you see, my problem is that the MPP has tried and survived all these years. 
because of its democratic principles and elections. Even in opposition, 30 years in opposition or so, they were still voting their uh, world members into office. So what has changed? And come to think that if a constituency, which is the, uh, the backbone of the party, the Chantry region, could get about 22 petitions uh, uh, coming on appeal, then there's something wrong. And the party has to look at it. And uh, you see, I will fight to the end on principle, not for my own personal thing, uh, but to tell the whole world and the party hierarchy that all no polls is not the principle of the party. Some you may men... have any reason for one or two, but to have a mass on the polls for all women, I mean, it isn't right. You some, can have some... specific examples where you can, the party can agree and allow them to go. But why you just, I mean, legislate? Look, it's unconstitutional, though. Because it's not backed by Congress, it's not backed by any constitutional requirements that all women MPs should go on the post. Uh, That's one. Yeah, you are treading on dangerous grounds. Time. So I'll make this very brief. Some young people, some youth of the area have gone to the party offices, you know, and I'm seeing that in the video right now, blocking it uh, and raining curses, pouring libation. The general secretary this afternoon is calling on the constituency executives to call them to order to bring them to uh, the disciplinary committee, have some uh, disciplinary actions taken against them. What do you make of that? Oh, you see, uh, important and that brings to even the national executive members and the leadership. At the time, something will happen. Not all of us are able to control our emotions. I have not spoken all this while to any press house until today when the thing came out. Others may not have the patience to do that. And if they have gone this uh, way and the party has rules, let them, and they think it's fair to uh, send them to the prayer committee, I mean, that one is the party decision. But we say, we don't have time on our side, and we want to get everybody on board so that we can prosecute the general elections. We Okay, uh, it looks like uh, I've lost him, but I'll try and raise him back and get his final words. Uh, Miss Miss Ote Mensa, let me take your final words. The point that Miss um, Ote Poku makes is that, uh, first of all, he thinks you have age on your side. Secondly, he thinks that uh, you won in the previous election against four able-bodied men. What is what has changed now? You could, you can easily deal with one person. Yes, yes. Um... I think, let me let me touch on um, briefly. Let me touch on the issue that he raised as to my qualification in the previous primary. I believe he's a lawyer. If he had issues with my qualification at that time, he could have raised it. And um, you, how do you call it? You've been in the. We were both in the race. Um, like you said, we that there were four strong men, and I was the only woman. We were in the race, and you had you think you had a genuine issue. You didn't raise it. I won the election. I went ahead to win the general election, and even getting the highest vote for the party. I believe he's rather making an unfortunate statement, especially at this point in time. Okay, so let's move on to the substantive question about what has changed. As someone who, had fought, who has fought four women should not be yes, getting that, uh... that, that, that. That's where I'm going. Okay. Um, obviously, obviously, the party has rules in every election that it comes out with. That is why before even the opening of nominations, the general secretary came out with some guidelines that is going to support this particular primary. And the, the mere fact that you qualified previously does not guarantee that you are going to qualify the next one. Because there are definitely there are rules and procedures that the general security, there are guidelines that the general security has come out with. So you have to make sure, even me as a as a as an MP, even if I am able to conform to the guidelines that has been laid out by the general security, I'm not sure the party will still go on and and and, and qualify me if I don't qualify. So the question I think we all should be asked is, what exactly went on? What was he told? What did he do that it wasn't right? Because it can't be that you think you did everything right and you were disqualified. Do you think he was disqualified because he did something wrong? Or not, not because the party wants the incumbent no, MPs because to go he, he to can, go on a post? He can tell us better. He can tell us better because he was at the vetting 
he went for the appeal. He can tell us better what went on. He said they because told him to step down at, at, at his... They, they didn't tell him he's process. disqualified. They told him to step down at the vetting. That's and, what he said. And he couldn't ask what the reason is. He's a lawyer. He should have asked. Because if, if you, you had the opportunity to meet with the, this man in the party and you didn't ask this question, then it's difficult for me to answer. Okay. Because definitely there should be a reason. It can't be that you went through the due process Very well. and then you think you have age on your side. I have age on my side and you don't have age on your side. So Very well. 52%, 52% is what the young man that I spoke gave you for... Uh, um, uh, in terms of what they think you have done, um, your achievements in the constituency, what's the way forward? You have uh, your elections that are coming up in, in just a few days, and you have this pot uh, of hot water brewing in your constituency. What's the way forward? What's the next move for you? Yes, um, uh, definitely. I believe there's one side that um, this Mark said that I think I'll agree with him that I thought I could have done more. But obviously, when we are first time in Parliament, you need time to adjust. You need time to get to know people, get to know um, the whole lobbying procedure and, and other things. Okay. And I believe with the experience I've been able to gain um, in these past years, being the Member of Parliament for Pacific Constituents, I believe it will help me a lot in going forward in working harder to mm. uh, gain more votes, of course, for the party and also bring a lot of development within the constituency. What's the um, one thing that you didn't do, which upon hindsight you think that you would do if you win this well, election? Well, I think, I think almost, virtually almost everything that I thought of doing, I touched on it. But there is one aspect that I think there is still more to do will be our road network. It's a lobby more and get more rules to be done. Because okay. as a constituency, that is our major challenge. But even with that, we, I mean, myself and the leadership within the constituency, we've been able to secure about six of our roads that they, they are constructed on working, which is the first time in the history of the constituency, where you get six of your major roads being worked on at the time. And I believe we could still do more, especially when um, just the constituency that gives the president the okay. highest I believe we can do that and so get more of our roads being fixed. Uh, Ms. Oteng-Mensa, I wish you all the best uh, uh, as you go forward. Francisca Oteng-Mensa is a member of parliament, incumbent member of parliament for Quabre East. I still have a lawyer, Osei, Anthony Osei-Poku, who says he will fight this until the very last time, uh, the very last opportunity. He's still here. Let me take your final words, Ms. Osei-Poku. He's indicated, she's indicated that the, the, you should have asked when you were when you were asked to step down at the vetting, you should have asked why. Did they tell you why? They say, uh, that's the funny aspect. The, the only reason was that uh, the chairman, the leadership have said that all the women in prison should go on the post. And I put out to the general secretary at the vetting that the only person that is guidelines excluded was the uh, MP for Ayuaso. Uh, I think West Wagon, who they said they would not allow anyone to contest. But not Shanti Vision. What was done here was somebody's own uh, wishful, with all respect, thinking. You see, and the danger is that if you allow people to sit in their bedrooms without following the constitution and they begin to legislate, and that's the beginning of the end of the party, and that's the principle I think everybody who loves the party must fight against. What is and the I'm way forward that, for you? Not because I want to go to parliament by all means. What is the way forward for you from here? Well, the way forward for me is that uh, we have 18 to 20 for the I'm prepared. I've worked tirelessly on the ground. I have contacted people, the delegates, and I, I think if I'm allowed in, they will vote for me. So I'm waiting to see the reason why they have, they have so excluded me. I went on appeal, and the appeal people understood my position. They said I've not been disqualified. And they were going to make a case for me at the neck. I, I don't know why the neck came out finally to disqualify me. And between so the last I'm time to get the result, I write to them formally for the result. Uh, and and between the and last time, it, hang on, between the last time you spoke to them and today that the list was outdoored, you have not heard from them. It doesn't tell you that you've been disqualified. 
no, let me tell you, no one, no one, looking to me, no one. And that is uh, uh, what is really based on my imagination. And if they told that you are speaking to me, that is not true. No one. Okay. Okay. But so then you... I went here, I still love the party, and I will want to wish well for the party. All right. Mr. Zaypoku, thank you very much for your time this afternoon, and we'll be following up. I wish you all the best as well. We'll be following up to find out how the story gets to its logical conclusion. I'll be going again to Mansong Kwanta, another part of the country where protests uh, emerged over the NPP primaries. Now, just a few messages that's coming in here. Uh, this uh, this one says, in fact, the invocation of cases are the contemporary in the contemporary era it's purely barbaric and we're having such persons in our political dispensation even burning offices npp ndc are the biggest challenge and the heaviest problem uh, of this country as a youth in the constituency this one says i am not pleased with the decision of the leadership they should know that our thumbs belong to us and that voting for the party is not mandatory competition is the bulwark of our party and its tradition since 1948 uh, the youth are right to vend their spleen but to invoke cases is below the belt yao mensa Kasim sent that one. Um, in Manson Kwanta, protests by supporters of a disqualified candidate there yielded positive results when a disqualification was overturned. Grace Ado spoke to Love FM's Nanaya Ojima. The NEC decided to uh, uh, disqualify me after I have been qualified at the vetting level. And uh, later on, we realized there was that agitation that there was an appeal, and because of that, I've been. Dis disqualified. My people have never been happy because they have been yearning for a change, even though I've been on the seat before. And that is where they compared uh, my performance to the current uh, MP, and they needed to bring me back. So I'm sure uh, now that I've been cleared to go for the uh, contest, they are going to vote for me massively. Look at the number of people who are here uh, supporting me. They, they were just worried because they heard that I will not be qualified to contest. So four years ago, Mr. Joseph Kwam beat you in the, in, 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 in the race. Yes. What, what do you think this, this, this time you will do different to bring you back into the seat? You will say he beat me uh, in the race. I will accept that because uh, any loss, any loss in a, a, a race is a loss. There was that difference of one vote. There was that difference of one vote. And uh, uh, you could realize that the, the election was just tied. And therefore, for him to do uh, his work, he has to do extra, extra work for people to accept him. Because if you beat somebody with difference, one vote, it tells you that in the next election, if the person bounces back, the contest is not going to be easy for you, unless you do something different. It means my loss might be maybe caught by something uh, uh, fishy. So, so this time you've done your homework and you believe you can win? I've done my homework and uh, even I was uh, at home when people came around always calling on me to come back and take the seat. To come back and take the seat and deliver them from what they, are, they, they, they term to be very terrible for them. That even though I was in the opposition, I was doing better than what they are seeing now. Because Mason Kwanta constituency uh, is known to be MPP stronghold. And therefore, if we are in opposition, we realize that the whole constituency is in the opposition. And therefore, now that MPP is in power, they were expecting that their government is now in, and therefore, something unique differently should be happening over there. And that is what they are not seeing. Congratulations to that woman. By, by all means, uh, that uh, that decision has been overturned in her favour, so she's contesting. But.